There are four things this ant does differently to almost all other ants. Join me to catch and study 50 green ant queens. This ant species is different to 99% of other ants. Let me tell you why. Australian green ants are always the first ants to fly in the warm weather of spring. They undertake their nuptial flights in the last days of August and early September. I headed out with the intention of finding some of these lovely ladies and I was in luck. I found a heap of queens in local parks and managed to catch them in small containers. They are hard to differentiate from the workers and they are very quick, but they were scuttling around everywhere trying to find a place to nest. I had them all in tubes by the end of the day, making sure they all had water and were comfortable in the dark. Their species name is Rytida panera metallica and they're easily recognised by their metallic green, purple appearance. Just look at their beautiful colour. It's actually quite hard to pick the queens in the wild. Let's look at a split screen to see the difference. The workers and the queens are very similar sizes at about seven millimetres, and it is only the raised thorax and longer abdomen that makes the queen distinguishable. This angle gives a really good view of that large thorax. So let's look at this beautiful species and I'll tell you four amazing facts about green ants that make them very different to other ants. Fact one. Unlike many ant species where the queen is the only reproductive ant in the colony, this species has gamer gates. These are mated female worker ants that can reproduce by mating with winged males that then lay fertilized eggs. This reproductive flexibility gives the species a significant advantage, as the loss of a queen does not necessarily mean the end of the colony. This means sometimes queens may not be fertile, a hard lesson I learnt myself a couple of years ago when I found about 70 queens and only a handful ended up laying. They must have all been from the same nest. However, this season I am in luck, as you can see by these beautiful ladies. They have all laid and after four weeks, the larvae is developing well. In fact, I was lucky enough to get a couple of queens laying an egg on video, so let's have a look at that. You can see by her hunched position that the egg is very close to coming out. She remains crouched and wiggles around to try to get comfortable. She stays like this for about 10 minutes while the egg slowly starts to protrude. You can see the whiteness of it here. However, it still takes another couple of minutes for her to lay it fully and finally the egg is all out. See how she finally pulls it out here and it is fully in her mouth. She then carries it carefully in her mouth, proudly showing her newborn to all her jealous companions. She's going to add it to the pile of brood where it will be cared for until a worker is hatched. You can see how tiny it is compared to the head of a toothpick. In comparison to this tiny egg, let's have a quick look at how well developed their larvae looks after four weeks. I'll look forward to their workers arriving in about another three weeks from now. Fact two. Apart from bull ant species, this is the only other native species in Australia that has caused hospitalisation due to anaphylactic shock. They are very aggressive, particularly when defending their nest, and both workers and queens possess venomous stings. A hospital study showed that in one year, over 10% of hospital admissions for ant stings and allergies were caused by green ants. You can really see her sting reflex working in overdrive here. She is desperate to get her sting in, and you can see how her abdomen is curved around looking for her victim. Just look at her attack and get her mandibles into this toothpick. So this lady packs a punch. Treat her with respect, and she will do the same to you. Fact three. 
This is one of the only ants in Australia to eat seeds, and by dispersing them, they contribute to the spread of various plant species. Whenever any of my customers buy seeds, I always check they are for green ants, as no other ants are interested in them. Out of interest, I gave one of my queens a seed, and she took it immediately and tried to give it to her larvae. Here's another queen actually moving her larvae to the seeds. This is not a source of protein, so the larvae won't get much from it. Let's give them some chopped up mealworm instead. First, the queen has her share, then she drags it down for the larvae to feast on. A few hours later and she has moved them all to ensure they get a proper feed. Except for this poor larvae, who just can't quite reach. Interestingly, all the queens that took seeds went through their preening routine after collecting them. Fact four. This species of ant cannot climb glass, which is highly unusual. Of all the thousands of ant species in Australia, I only know of two species that cannot climb glass. The first species are trapjaw ants. Here they are, scrambling, trying to get a grip on the glass. And the second species are these green ants. They cannot get any grip on glass, which makes them a very easy beginner ant. There is no chance of escape when feeding. Before I leave, let's quickly watch this second queen lay an egg. She has the same similar crouched position, and you can really see the egg protruding here from her abdomen. And she has it. She raises her head and there it is in her mouth. Congratulations are in order. Just a final note for beginner ant keepers. These green ant queens are semi-claustral, which means if you do catch them, you need to feed them sugars and protein while waiting for workers to come. If you set them up with a small outworld, the colony will develop quicker. Thanks for joining me to learn how green ants are different to other ants. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more ant keeping adventures and tips. Until next time, happy ant keeping.